And I believe we've got to understand that as amazing as these last seven years have been, God's getting ready to take it higher. Years ago, I was trying to understand awakening versus revival. And there's really not a versus. It's just a different, a, a different understanding of it. And as I was thinking about it, I, I, I thought about this. The Lord kind of helped me understand it this way. He said, he said uh, an awakening is an epidemic of revival. Now, this was before we had a pandemic. <laughs> okay. The Lord says it's an epidemic of revival. And he said, it's like this, one person catches it. And then they get around others. And then that person catches it. And then everybody that person gets around catches it. And then everybody that person gets around catches it. And pretty soon, you've got an outbreak of revival that has gone viral. Stand to your feet. The Lord says, son, I've made you a revivalist. But I've also made you a prophet. And the Lord says, son, I've done a work of healing in your heart. The Lord said, the enemy sought you. Sort of like the enemy came after Peter. And Jesus said to Peter, don't worry, Peter, I prayed for you. The Lord says, son, don't worry, I prayed for you. <laughs> the enemy tried to sift you. The enemy tried to confuse you. But the Lord says, son, I chose you and I kept you. And the Lord says, son, you're going to be a fire starter. A fire starter and a torch bearer. And the Lord says, son, that there's going to be times that, um, you, that you'll have one foot in both worlds. You'll have one foot in the business world and one foot in the church world. And you've been crying out to me and you've been saying, God, am I a minister? Or am I a businessman? And the Lord says the answer is yes. And the Lord says I will prosper you in both worlds. Is this a person you're related to? His wife? Okay, come. And the Lord says, son and daughter that I've made you as a dynamic duo, as a team, says the Lord. And I'm going to use you like a double-edged sword. There's going to be times you cut one way and times you cut another way, but you're not going to use the sword on each other. The Lord says that I want you to know that you're going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to be um, an example of strong marriages. You're going to be an example of integrity. You're going to be an example of raising godly children. You're going to be an example, says the Lord, of being those that do not compromise. And the Lord says that you've had to face some things even within some family members. But the Lord says, I want you to know that there's going to be a grace upon that situation and that there's going to come some reconciliation into some places that have seemed broken broken. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you both a ministry of reconciliation. And you're going to understand that part of your responsibility is to reconcile to men and women to me, husbands to wives, wives to husbands, parents to children, that you're going to be bridge builders of reconciliation, that are going to build a bridge out of the world to the church, a place where people can come and be reconciled to the local church. There's so a lot of people out there that said, I still love Jesus, but I don't like the church. Jesus said, I died for the church. I gave my life for the church. You're going to reconcile people to the church. Now, Father, I thank you, God, for the anointing that rests over them. I charge them, Father God, with this new spirit of prophetic revelation that's coming to them. The Lord says, daughter, get ready. Dreams, 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 dreams are going to multiply, multiply, multiply. Lord, I loose it over them now in Jesus' name. Whew. Come on, everybody, shout breakthrough. breakthrough. Let me give you the definition of breakthrough. I love words. When God keeps saying breakthrough, I love words. The Webster's definition of this word breakthrough means a military movement. How many here are part of the army of the Lord? Okay, let me try that again. Some of you are uncomfortable with that. How many know we're supposed to be a family? We're also the ecclesia. Part of the definition of ecclesia is an army. 
They're a legislative body. I think you've been taught on it. The Ecclesia is a legislative body. Those called out from the population to form a legislative body to make decrees, to line up the city, to line up the culture, to line up the, 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 the individuals, and to, and to set a standard in the land. That's Ecclesia. But the Romans also used it as a military term. Those called out from the general military population to form a specialized task force. And their mission was go in to all the newly conquered Roman territories. And their assignment was make this new territory look like Rome. Build buildings, establish culture, set roads. In other words, replicate Rome in this new territory. The ecclesia. This is why Jesus taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What that literally means in the Greek is superimpose heaven on earth. Come on, we got some work cut out to do, right? But you see, the church is getting a new mentality. We're realizing that church doesn't mean congregation. Church means ecclesia. Church means a, a legislative body, a military task force. We are called to come together to make a difference in the heavens and to pull an open heaven down into the earth. God's changing our mind. Amen. And so as God is bringing us into this place of being a breakthrough people, we are, the word breakthrough means a military movement or advance all the way through and beyond the enemy's frontline defense. Everybody say through and beyond. See, the church has been really good at breaking through. We've been terrible at going beyond. We get breakthrough in here. But can we take breakthrough in here and bring breakthrough out there? Through and beyond. The best example I could give you of a breakthrough moment was D-Day in World War II. It was when, you, we've all seen it, right? When they landed on the beaches of Normandy and at great cost to human life, they took the beach out of the hands of those evil Nazis and they established a beachhead for freedom. But I'll tell you what they did not do that day. They broke through that day. But I'll tell you what they did not do. They did not put their guns down in the sand and stop and have a party. Why? Because they needed to go through and beyond. They needed to liberate cities. They needed to liberate nations. They had people that were in bondage that needed to be set free. So here's what we do in church. We pray and we see revival. We pray and we see miracles. And we have a party. That's good. I like it a party. But we got to understand the calling is go through and beyond. Start carrying revival everywhere you go. Start carrying revival into your workplace. Start carrying revival into the grocery store. Start carrying revival with you. No matter where you're going, into your schools. We are carriers of the Spirit of God. 